perfect. Hot water, cold water, done. All right, welcome to Design by Pack. Uh, in this video, we have a uh, bathroom shower head faucet that just started running. My son took a shower, he just turned off the the tap and the water just continued running. So thank goodness I was home at the time. Thank goodness I was able to turn off the whole hot, whole house water when this happened. Uh, I don't even know what have happened would have happened if I was out of the house or unavailable because I my son certainly does not know how to turn off the water. And yes, he's uh, 19 years old, or um, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, he would not have known what to do. So thank goodness I was home. Uh, in this video, um, you'll see uh, me do the change and do the repair. Some things to watch out for, and is that um, a obviously make sure the water, the house water is off. Uh, in my case, I had to have it off because I know some bathrooms have a water shut off valve right behind the the wall. Mine doesn't. It's a just complete solid wall, so I had to go to the basement to do a whole house shut off. So make sure the water shut off. Make sure when you remove the stems and the valves that it's you've got the hot and the cold water properly um, labeled so you know where to how to install put it back in. And the third really big thing is the screws that you're taking and taking off are really small. In my case, we have a drain that has pretty big openings and I don't want the screws to fall down if it slipped out of my hands into the drain. So I put a little towel over the over the drain hole so that if anything did fall, it would not go into my pipe. So couple things to watch out for you'll see it in the video um, and you'll also see when I put it back together for the first time I didn't install it the exact same way I took it apart so when I turned it from hot to cold and back to hot it was not working as as it needed to so always be careful when you take things apart remember how they were so you put it back together the same way all right so here's the video thanks so much shut off I am going to remove the handle all right so I'm gonna do this just there's an allen key just get the right side oh right there so let's see if we can there's an allen key there we go there we go and I highly recommend before I go too far I'm going to put something over that, the drain, so that in case the screw falls down, um, it won't go down the, the drain, which is important. And it would be terrible, terrible, terrible pain in the butt. All right, so I'm going to need a second hand, so I'm going to look, put the camera down. All right, so I got that off. I'm now going to grab my Phillips head, uh, remove this, the, those two screws, and remove this, remove the cover plate, and hopefully I get access to at least the hot and cold side, even though I think the inside needs to be replaced hot and cold, so I can turn those off, so I can turn the rest of the house water on while I go shopping for a new valve stem, or valve. Here we go. So give me a second, I'm going to grab the Phillips head. So, I also want to remember where this goes. So in the off position, this is straight down virtually. 6 o'clock, so when I reinstall it, I'm going to put it back at 6 o'clock as well. Always do a check where this is because you can set this to a different position so that if you've got little kids, the full hot isn't just only hot water. It always includes some cold water and so you can make adjustments that way. Um, so I'm going to put it back the same way because we liked it the way it was. Oh, and remember, obviously, I turned off the whole house water to do this. Um, I guess it's obvious when I was videotaping that I did not have water coming out of the faucet. So, so there's that. That came off. 
just came off with it. This was only one way to go in, but that groove is at the top that came off. So now I'm gonna kick out these folks' head and hopefully, if I'm lucky, I can get access to the hot and cold. And if I do, hopefully I can then uh, turn those off and turn the house water back on while I repair this. So let's go see what happens. The big reveal is coming up. Here we go. Fun doing things for the first time every time. No access. Not at all. No. No access whatsoever. And I just want to add that unlike other bathrooms, there is no access on the back side of the wall to get at the plumbing at all, which is why I'm saying there's just no access for this faucet right now. So, um, that's unfortunate. So, I'm gonna have to take a look at this to see what that just comes off. That's just, Hot and cold, so I need a new one. I'm gonna need a uh, vice grip here to kind of pull the gently wiggle this out. Uh, being careful not to damage the pipes behind it. So uh, I will get back to you on that. I have to take this clip off. There's a clip right. Let's see if I can get a good angle on this. Ooh, get it in focus. There we go, right there. Let's zoom out so we can get a better focus. There we go. There's a clip right there that I have to pull up. So I'm gonna use my flathead screwdriver and pull that up. I don't want to do it one-handed because I don't want it to drop down behind it, drop down behind there. So, but I'm just gonna pull this like a, it's like a U, upside down U. So I'm gonna go take that off right now. Take this. Hopefully, you guys. There we go. There we go. So this is what I pulled out. Be careful to have it not drop down below there. Hmm. I don't want to reach up too far. Here we go. Oh, mine is really stuck. Wow. <sighs> okay. That was awfully tight. I'm gonna go to Home Depot and get a new one and try and replace this. Here we go. All right, so I went to Home Depot and they actually had the exact replacement part in stock. There you go, now you can see it. Um, they had an off-brand one called Danka that I could have gotten. This is actually a fairly expensive one compared to other ones, um, even other Mo ones. This was $47. There's a Danka for $36 um, and I don't have any problems getting off-brand ones. I certainly do that a lot other times, but I just didn't want to mess with this again. Um, so I got the OAM one. Feel free to try the Danka one. Let me know how it works for you. Um, so here we go. And at least with the Moen one, it comes with um, lubricant with it. Maybe the Danka one does, but I know this is needed to slide this back in there. So hopefully this will be done in a few minutes. And 
another thing, and maybe I'll do another video or have it in the comment section below, but um, it would have been nice to know which one I needed before I went to take this apart because I could have bought this at Home Depot. This is a tool that comes with it that helps you take the old one off. And I did not know which one I needed, so I had to use the vice grips in the old fashioned way, just a whole bunch of grunt force. But it would have been so much better to be able to remove this old one with, uh, with this tool. Because this tool, what it allows, it goes around that and it, you, you put a wrench around it and you can wiggle it. It helps get it dislodged. So, that's that. So, all right, so it's pretty, it's pretty simple. You just put lubricant on this oval here. They call it the oval right here. This oval here on both sides, put lubricant on it. You put it back in, you need to make sure when you do it, there's an H and a C for hot and cold, and that's how I took it out. So when I put it back in, I want to make sure that the H and C are the same directions as it was when I installed it, or when I took it out. So I'm gonna put it in like this, H and C. So then we'll get the lubricant on this, and then let's go um, reassemble it and see if that's fixed it. So here we go, just tear that. Put a little bit on. Hmm. Ooh, here we go. There we go, I've got someone there. There we go, got some there. Let's get some more on. There we go. Same with here. All right, so I got lubricant on each side of the oval, hot and cold. Let's get this back in there. And there we go, done. So let's go reassemble this. Let's put um, this back on carefully. So when you put this on, there's grooves on the top that you need to slide this through. So groove on your side, there we go. So it's easier to do with needle nose pliers because you can't strap it around because there's holes that actually physically has to go through. So then that's in. Um, let's push this down a little bit more. I think, I think it's in all the way, but just to be sure. There we go. Yep, and kids down. Let's put, um, before we put everything back together, let's put this on here, right? Let's put this on here. Let's put this on here. Uh, this has to line up with this. There it does. Let's screw this on and uh, let's go see if this all worked. And then if it does, then I'll reassemble everything properly. I am just doing this. There we go. There we go, yep. All right, so let me go um, take a look. All right, so you didn't see this part. I tested this with my son who was here to make sure that when I turned the water on downstairs, it didn't explode everywhere. It was able to turn off and turn on. So I'm doing this test to show you, even though I already know it already works. So when I turn on the water downstairs, this was in the uh, open position. There we go, so here we go. This seems to be working. But I noticed something. This is not in the right spot. I have to take this off, flip it around, and reinstall it. 
because I I can do either one direction or the knot or the other. I can't just turn it all the way around. So here I go. Because I'm just taking this stopper and changing the position of it. Remember I said when I took this off. This was in the down position, like that. That goes back on there. There we go. So now this is gonna work the way I think it's, I expect it to work. It was turning half, quarter turn one way, half quarter turn the other way, so this is in the wrong spot. So now I fixed it. I turn this, keep turning this, keep turning this, until it's all the way on hot now. Yep, that's hot water. You do a quarter turn, it should be cold, that's cold water, keep turning it, stop, perfect. Now I'm just gonna reassemble it in. All right, so the battery died on my camera. I don't really know when it stopped. So I'm gonna undo this, so hold this as you unscrew this. Cause I don't wanna go downstairs and turn the whole house water off again. So just make sure of this. And then there's this white. So these were out. I put this just over top, screw in there, screw in there. They're hard to line up because they're long screws and the 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 receptacle, the other portion of it is about well, two, two and a half inches back. So took me a second to line them up, no big deal. You probably could take this out and then maybe visually see it lined up a little bit easier, but um, I didn't, I left that in. So once I got those in, make sure I line up the moment so you can see it right side up, hot, cold. I made sure that I adjusted this because this was um, turned at the wrong angle. And I think I was able to videotape that. So I'm gonna put this in here like that. Put the screw in here. And then make sure this is just to the left of that. There it is. I'm gonna hold it and then screw this in. Yep, so it's perfect. So this starts with the handle in the down position. So there it is. Now, it's going to be a little tricky to get to it. So what I'm going to do is turn on the water for a second while I screw this in. So we start to screw it in. And then I'm going to turn it off. Now that it's in there, whether that's the best way or not, probably the best way is just turning off the water, but this is the second floor of the house, the water shut off, is in the basement, and I'm lazy. So there we go. That's now in there, perfect. Hot water, cold water, done. Easy fix, it's much easier than I even thought it was gonna be. Uh, I'll talk to you in a minute, thanks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully you learned what to do, what not to do, things to look out for. Uh, you saw some of the pitfalls that I ran into. <clears throat> uh, let me know in the comments below any suggestions of what I could have done better, what I could have done differently, what I did right maybe. Um, and any comments in general if you want to reach out to me. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you enjoyed what you see and I'll keep on making videos. Thanks. Bye.